Nice. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, look at that big fish. Look at that big brown. Oh my gosh. Did you see that? That is wild. Wow, guys. Wow. Watch out for that big old cuddy. Or brown trout. Something's in there. Dang, guys. I was hoping I'd get that big one again. Dang. So I kind of stopped reading the water because uh, there's a probably an 18 inch trout. Oh, he's right there. He's right there. He's right underneath him. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. He's chasing him. He's chasing him. Good morning everyone, welcome to this episode of Skitty Fishing and today I'm going to be switching it up just a little bit and I'm going to be taking you guys on a little guiding experience. I've done a video like this once already this year, uh, about maybe three to four months ago and uh, it was actually like late spring, there was some serious runoff conditions, it was a smaller creek than this and it was cool, I got some good feedback, people really liked it and I think uh, the channel subscribers would really appreciate more of this kind of content so I'm going to be uh, putting stuff like this into the mix uh, going forward and it's stuff that I'm developing and working on. Uh, in addition to the video that I did previously, I do need to kind of premise the same that uh, not all rivers and creeks are created equal. There's some applied knowledge here that you can take to your creek, but it doesn't mean that your creek is going to fish the exact same as the point I'm trying to make. Uh, the other thing too is that I'm going to try to do most of the dialogue straight on my camera but I might interrupt myself with some voiceover work just to kind of help make a point and kind of reiterate and explain things that maybe otherwise I don't do perfect in a live scenario. And lastly, uh, I'm not a professional guide. Um, I don't claim to be the best guide. I don't claim to be the best river reader out there. So the rod I'm gonna be fishing today is a Tenkara rod and this is the Tanuki Snow 375. This is not my rod and this is actually courtesy of Amanda Hoffner. She's awesome. She sent a few of these to the channel to, to test and demo and uh, this is not my first impression review. I'm going to be making that with this rod but this is just the rod that I happen to have chose because I kind of wanted a light 12 foot rod for this creek. Um, so yeah I will be kind of covering this rod in better detail in a different video. I would also like to thank the Heritage Tenkara Project, especially if you're a new entry level Tenkara angler, it's really easy to immerse yourself into this phenomenon of what Tenkara is. And so the Heritage Tenkara Project is awesome. Would strongly recommend checking them out. Promotions aside, this is all about reading the river. And uh, hopefully I can show you guys, you know, how I'm getting some of my luck. And uh, let's get to it. So let's talk about fly selection real quick. So I'm just getting down here to the bank and uh, if you are new into the Tenkara world or even just the fly fishing world in general, don't worry about matching the hatch in locations like this where you kind of have to drive and get kind of out of the city to get to it. Uh, for me, that's usually this uh, Pheasant Tail Sakasa Kabari made by Dragon Tail or even the Purple Haze Adam's Fly variant. But oftentimes, guys, I just start with what's already pre-tied on my line because uh, you know, I'm lazy and sometimes being lazy really works uh, specifically with Tenkara. I will say in confidence that you can choose the wrong fly and get away with it a little bit easier than you can with a Western fly rod because the tight line aspect of this usually correlates to better presentation. So a good presentation with the wrong fly can often still yield fish. All right, so what I see here guys is a lot of turbulent water. This water is a little bit fast today, but if you kind of see in the middle, kind of on the left side middle, you can see some rocks and the water kind of slows down a little bit. This could be some good water for some trout, especially at the head of the pool, waiting to ambush anything like that, that may come in. So there's the first fish. It's a barbless fly, so might lose him. Oh, there he goes. Awesome. Okay. 
first fish hooked. That's awesome. Again, you can just see where this little rock just breaks. And then you can see the water just kind of gets soft, especially where any kind of overhang is. And we had a, a fish take the confidence fly. So we're gonna roll with the confidence fly now. All right, so we got some good pools coming up. So what I think I wanna do is come into the water. So I got a pool here of number one, pool here number two, number three, number four over by the rock. All right, I'm gonna have to interrupt myself here, but you can see the numbers laid out on the screen. And these are the four most likely locations that I would be looking for trout in this run. Any kind of structure in the river is your friend, and this rock is exactly what I'm looking for on the left-hand side for number one. It's gonna slow the water down behind it, and it's gonna allow trout to stack up a little bit in that run looking for food that might be swinging downstream. In fact, it's worth fishing number one before moving up into the more obvious number two spot so I don't burn that pocket. Should be able to pick up at least one fish in any of those four. Got one. There's a barbless hook, so do have to be a little careful. Uh, decent brown. Got him. All right. <laughs> yeah, guys. This one's way pretty. My hands are wet. Always try to keep your hands wet when touching fish. Though you may already know that. Look at that. Wow, guys, that's going to be a picture fish. Just for the record, in addition to keeping your hands wet, release your fish downstream so they don't swim up and spook the fish in front of you. Okay, let's try pocket number two. Straight here in front of me. Oh, that was a hit. If you miss a take, I would only do about three more casts into that spot. And if you yield nothing, just simply move on from it. Sometimes the fish will get spooked just from poking the barb of a hook. And that's pretty much all there is to it. But this run was looking pretty good. As you can see, the little waterfall here creates a nice little line. And naturally, the pattern that we're looking for is where water slows down underneath those lines. So what's going to happen is the bugs are going to come downstream and they're going to kind of circle into that run, giving the trout an uptime into eating a good food source. Unlike the run to the left of it, which you can see some white water. And then sometimes you don't catch anything in every spot after that. <laughs> This is pretty fishy though. All right guys, to keep this video moving along, I will note that I did not catch a fish at spot number four, despite how fishy it looked. So we're gonna be focusing on spot number three here. However, it is worth noting that fish probably hold to spot number four over spot number three for safety and then move over to spot number three for feeding. Runs like these are a little bit longer and sometimes have more than one fish. So I would focus on fishing the back of the pool first and see if you can pull a trout out, then move to the head of the pool and do another cast. Got one. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh no, oh no. Nope, no, no, no. Browns will do that, man. They will jump downstream on you. Ah, oh, I knew that was gonna happen. You see that? I mean, they do flop literally all the way downstream. <laughs> Courtesy of barbless hooks. Barbless hooks means you may lose some. But that fish could not keep me tight. Oh no. Oh no. Did not want to hook something there. Okay, this isn't perfect, but we'll try it anyway. Got some uh, breakage in the water here. It's a very consistent riffle pattern. Breaks up on the left. Try to go anywhere where I see some calm water. I even try the far bank. Do like three casts in places that don't look perfect, but maybe deserve a little bit of attention. Uh 
Oh yeah. There we go. Look for the break in the water. Watch your feet. Oh, I'm gonna lose this fish. <laughs> there we go. I went the wrong way with this. Uh... Woo. The sling pack, holy crap. Can't even say words this morning. All right, let's just get our bearings real fast. Nice thing about barbless too, guys, is uh, when you're ready, it takes literally two seconds or they just pop right out when the fish is wiggling in your net. I'm using a pretty overkill net. The fish do get bigger than this, but uh, I'm uh, also working on a collab video with the Ventic, but good net, even better fish. There we go, that's probably what, 21 to let's say 30 and a half, so. Beautiful, beautiful trout. Water temperatures feel very good today. And yeah, I mean, really, again, just look where it breaks up. So I saw this kind of soft water on the right side and uh, sure enough, it looked fishy and produced the trout for us. All right, this is where it gets tricky because if I catch a fish right here, I'm gonna have to get super creative on how I land it, but let's just see if there is one. There was a tree on the right hand side of this screen just out of the frame which forced me to walk over this log jam but this is a really fishy pool here right in front of me. If you look upstream this run is really shallow and riffly and there's a lot of little pebbles so nothing really going on there but this pool is extremely fishy. Just remember that if you do hook a fish focus on your footing first. Focus on yourself and your safety and make sure that you don't put yourself in any harm's way over the fish. Yep, there is. <laughs> oh man. Okay, well. Let's keep him up and tight. So what he's gonna do, he's gonna go under those logs. It's a brown trout, he's head shaking hard on me. Got to be careful for my own safety here. This is uh, one I would recommend for more advanced anglers, I suppose. You got to watch your footing at all times. No fish is worth more than anything that lacks in the safety department. Come on. Come on. Come on. Got him. Yes. All right, let's. Okay. Whoo! All right. Yeah, I don't think you like that one bit, buddy. Sorry about that. There we go. I'll let him go. Biggest one of the day. Ugh. Whew, all right. That was a little intense. <laughs> yeah, that one I'd recommend when you're really comfortable walking over big structure like that. I mean, so much could have gone south or at least have a friend with you you know having a friend goes a long way all right well here's something kind of rare for me a little rare treat is this nice soft water up against a rock wall i do like this not really sure where to start you can see there's a v coming in so you could pretty much hit right where it tapers, either to the right or to the left. Got one. Nice. Just a little guy. We'll just handline him. They'll probably pop off anyway. 
little brownie. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There we go. Hands are soaking wet from picking him up, but beautiful guys. Nice. Okay. Well, again, just where that little V shape is. That may have been the only one, we'll find out. Let's head to the left of that V now, maybe closer to the head. Oh, I think I got a bump. I don't know, I made it hit bottom too. Can't tell for sure. There we go. Oh, yeah, that was a bump. No, maybe it wasn't, I don't know. No, that'll happen. I'll note that a few minutes before this run, I made my first major fly change of the day because I did go a few pockets after the last clip without catching anything when it seemed promising, but I did also learn that there was a guy ahead of me, so that may have contributed to it as well. But it's worth noting that I did move to the Brent's Warbird fly, and it really looked good for this run right here. As you can see, there's ripples all the way down through the center and the left up against the rock wall, but we've got some nice calm water off to the right. However, it is also worth noting, there is a big sandbar at the very bottom of this, and oftentimes there's not gonna be trout and heavy sandbars, but there is some pebbles off to the right where they can pick off some food that may come out. Okay. A lot of potential fishy water here. Oh, first cast. Okay, well, I didn't even get a second to read that, so. <laughs> Holy. Well, nymphs are the tickets. I'll tell you that. Another brown, very nice. No, oh, cutthroat. That's a cutthroat, hell yeah. That's a Colorado River cutthroat. Nice. Well, I'm no longer skunked on cutthroats i was just about to be heck yeah guys wow i mean all the spawn colors are gone on this guy so he looks a lot like a bonneville kind of kind of looks like a bonneville but they're colorados in this system goodbye buddy thank you for playing So I had, I had tried using some confident dries, like some Adam's flies. And after a handful of casts of not getting anything, I just kind of stopped talking and, and reading. And then I was like, you know what? I bet you I should go back to a nymph. And I did, and it worked. So again, you can see how it kind of waves. And I just stayed to the right of that. I mean, I didn't really pick any particular structure. I just stayed to the right of it and worked my way down. Well, potentially more than one spot here. The first thing that stands out to me about all of this is that foam on the right side. It's pretty rare that we don't catch trout where there's foam. So what I'll do is I'll work the left side first. You can see there's a lot of different currents kind of going on. You know, the main one's kind of pushing to the right down this. Then it kind of does a little eddy, kind of wraps back around. Kind of some whirlpool action over here. I'll start with the far left get up there as far as I can.
Oh, oh, that was a bite. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. That's a cutty. That's a cutty. I don't want him to go downstream on me. I was starting to get nervous right there. I was like, there's no way. So what I'm doing is to make sure I don't lose them. I'm letting them stay. Let them win the fight a little bit sometimes because when they come up to the surface and head shake, that's when you're going to lose them on a barbless fly. Let them kind of pull down. Let them work the current a little bit. And boom. And then you can land a fish just like that. Never mind the tree. Sorry, lady. Tenkara bump on your rod. There we go. Okay, let's Heck yeah guys. Awesome. Beautiful. Beautiful fish. Oh, look at that. Beautiful fish. There he goes. And by kind of getting down and enjoying this moment with this fish, I've probably given a little bit of rest to some pockets that might be alert. I'm gonna say probably not though. I think uh, this is definitely the fishiest side. And it's deep. It's definitely deep. I mean, look how I cast it here, nothing. Cast it there, nothing. Get it kind of on this left side, on the left side of this rapid here. Was able to pick one up as it kind of circled back. And I don't know if I did anything wrong the first two times other than, you know, sometimes you need uh, the current to help you with that natural presentation. That fish may have saw it the first couple times only to take it on that, you know, third attempt. But sun's behind a cloud. That could work out to my advantage here. A little sneak up. You also have to be careful because if you see a trout here and you spook it up, it could spook trout underneath the tree that are also hanging out. So that would be super stealthy sometimes. I see a lot of sand here right off the bat, but doesn't mean that there won't be fish. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, he was right underneath the log. That's perfect. That's a cutthroat too. I was thinking they weren't gonna swim upstream much, but. No, not under there. Let's get him out, get him out. Nope, get him out. There's definitely another fish. Another fish just chased this fish. So let's back up slowly. See if we can yield more opportunities. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, that's a good one, guys. It's a really good one. Nice, dude. Wow. Hands were wet for that. Let's get down in the water. Love that. Biggest cutthroat of the day. I saw him come out and swipe it. So I'll tell you kind of how I was reading this because I'm kind of getting lazy now and I don't think I'm explaining it as well as I should be. But remember I said you got to be careful when you approach places like that because if there's a trout behind it, you might spook it up and it might spook fish in front of it. That was a really, really good spot, and it still is. I don't know if I'll catch fish. I don't know if they're alert now, but let's just read this. So you have the safety barrier of a trout can come up here. They can get all the way through, all the way upstream. But right where this tree branch is, or where this uh, dead tree is, there's some foam building up. 
So I started to get it kind of in front of it, got it all the way down, didn't see anything. So I started pulling it back to get ready for my next cast. That's when I saw him come out and swipe it. And uh, then another one came out to kind of check on it or figure out what the heck was going on. So they're definitely just chilling right underneath all of that, basically where you can get hung up and stuff. So I think, let's try it again. See if I can go even further over there. Nope. Gotta be so careful. There's just so much potential to get hung up on something. So what we'll do is we'll take a step in front get all the way to the back now there we go Got him. Yes. He came out for it. Now he's going underneath the log. So here's the trick. When you got vegetation you got to work with, keep your rod low, but keep it tight. So I'm moving to the left to pull him out. Because if I start taking steps forward or if I give Manny slack, the first place he's going is right where that last trout went, which was right where all that vegetation was. See, now he's got me all pinned and screwed and so again, it's a cutthroat. So let's just net this guy. I'm gonna lose him. I'm absolutely sure I'm gonna lose him. Ugh. Yep, he's out. Oh, there he goes. That'll happen, guys. He'll get hung up around twigs and stuff. I probably could have forced him out a little bit, but you know, I'm not in the business of breaking jaws with force either, so. That's cool though, no complaints. Definitely got another one to strike. This looks good though. Fairly confident we might get one here. So clearly this log right in the dead center is helping create this barrier for me. Everything to the right of it is very, very choppy. We got a nice smooth surface on the left side, but the trout can be chilling right underneath that log looking at either side so let's oh, i'm not getting where i want it to go thanks to this wind There we go. That's where I wanted it. Gotcha. See, I didn't like the first two casts. As soon as I liked that cast, I hooked one. Now I have to worry about vegetation, right? Let this fish go where he wants to go right now. I can't really wrangle him anywhere. He was right underneath the log, right where I thought he was. I can still feel him. This is where we got to be super, super strategic. Else we're going to lose a fish and a fly. So number one, keep them tight. Number two, safety first. Watch your footing at all times. We don't need a hole in our waders. I got to figure this out. This is probably the trickiest trout that I'll land today, if I can land it. Let's see. I can still feel him wiggling. 
but I also think my line is caught. So it's kind of a double whammy. Line getting caught means higher chance of losing that fish. It's very sandy right here, so I don't want to slip. There he goes, okay. He's going out. There he is. Oh. Got him. That <laughs> was way smaller than I was expecting him to be. Way smaller. Okay. So, that first off, that trout was absolutely worth losing if it came down to it. Because uh, what I didn't want to do was, you know, slip, break an ankle or something. I've already sprained one ankle fishing in the last year and a half. I don't want to do that again. That sucked. And he's got very, very fine spots on him. There he goes. Heck yeah, guys. So I think we can get one more, maybe possibly up here. Might be a little bit easier to land if so, but man, I'm like right in the middle of this log jam. Uh, obviously it's very turbulent on the left, but you can see where this log is coming out on the right. So let's try to stay to the right of that log. That's exactly where I wanted that. Got one. Yes. Oh, he's coming down on me. Is it a brown? Oh, no. <laughs> Look at this rod, guys. Holy crap. He's about to go top water right now due to... Uh, Another cutthroat. Dang, guys. Cutthroat central today. Uh, uh, got him. Oh. Sheesh. Let's get slightly up. Uh. Nice. All right, beautiful guys. Kind of hoping for a cool swim out, but suppose we'll just, oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. There you go, you got it. I believed in you the whole time. Whew, this dragon tail slink pack is pretty cool. It is kind of hard to get to the authentic net sometimes, but definitely cool all right guys well i think that's going to complete it definitely called out quite a few today right before they were caught and and i hope that gives you guys some context to be able to work with that and uh, bring it to the creeks with you so ultimately structure is good it builds up a lot of pools pools are pools are what we're looking for for the most part you know when you start getting into some of that riffly stuff that's behind me all the way in the back there uh, there's hardly ever going to be any trout there or they're going to go there when you spook them or let them go. So uh, look for where the water slows down. Uh, try to get a fly that can either just sit right on the top um, or if it can kind of like swirl around with the current. Uh, so sometimes nymphs are the ticket, sometimes dries are the ticket. Today was all about nymphs. Um, but no complaints, guys. Caught some cutthroat in some new places. Uh, Tanuki Snow was an exceptional rod. Honestly, super huge fan of this. Uh, makes me very excited to get a video working on it. Um, and I'd like to thank again, Lady Tenkara Bum and uh, the Heritage Tenkara Project for uh, lending this rod out, letting me fish it uh, for the next few weeks and uh, could not be happier with the performance of it. And again, I can't stress that uh, I'm not a guide. I'm not here to tell you that my video is the one all be all and that it's better than others. But if you catch a fish because you learned something from this video, I would ask that you, you know, comment below and let me know because uh, that's ultimately what it's all about, guys. I'm sharing my resources, my journey. I asked a handful of people how to catch fish, how to read a river. And now I'm literally trying to do the same thing and leave these resources behind for you guys so um but yeah 
Beautiful, almost near autumn day. Zero complaints. Caught a lot of fish. Could have caught more. <laughs> so it's just uh, the name of the game, guys. So let me know if you have any questions. Uh, appreciate the feedback. Subscribe if you enjoy this. You guys rock. Sincerely appreciate y'all. We'll see you on the next adventure in tight lines, everyone.